Hey guys, uh, this is a video tutorial on how to do cell shading. Um, so I have a pre-drawn line art here and the first thing you want to do when you're coloring in an image is to set up a background layer that helps you select only your characters. What do I mean by this? Um, set your foreground color to black, create a layer underneath your lines, then select your lines layer, use the magic wand tool, and select your background. Uh, as long as you've filled in all the lines perfectly and there's no open spaces, you should be able to select only the background. Now, uh, use your brush, go back to that background layer, let's just name it background, so we can keep track of things. Yeah, and just fill the whole selection with black. The reason why we fill it in with black is because we don't want to miss any spaces, otherwise it'll mess up our selection. Once you're done and you're sure that every space is filled in, you can uh, lock the layer, uh, lock the translucency or opacity of the layer, and um, fill it in with white. What this allows us to do is um, basically select only our characters using the magic wand tool. Uh, so if you select anywhere in your character shape, it will select only the character shape and you don't have to worry about coloring within the lines. All right, so let's start off with the skin layer. I'm going to make a new folder and call it skin. And then we're going to do one layer for base color. And it's good if you organize things like this because um, later on uh, it's very easy to change the color of one particular part, like the skin or the hair, if you organize it like this. Sometimes people draw all the base colors on one layer. Um, that can get a little complicated um, when it comes to changing the specific color of something. So I always do it like this. All right, so now what you want to do is uh, pick a color for skin. It's usually between the uh, red and yellow range. Um, this looks good. And since it's a base layer, I'm just going to color the whole thing in. The layers for the hair and the eyes and everything can go on top of this layer, so I don't really need to worry about coloring in uh, within any lines within the character. All right, so create another layer, and this layer is going to be shade one. And what you want to do is pick a color that's a little bit uh, darker and a little bit more saturated. So right about here, I think. Maybe a little lighter. Yeah, that's good. And uh, start shading. All right. And basically, um, you're drawing on a new layer, so this is not going to be part of that base color layer. Uh, you'll see in a minute why that'll allow you to change colors pretty easily. something there. All right. Okay, that's look, that looks good. Now, you want to add one more layer in here. We'll call that shade 2. And for that, you want to go back to shade 1 and use the magic wand tool. First deselect and then select only the areas of shading that you did with that darker color. Go back to the shade 2 layer and we want to pick an even darker color, even more saturated. And then here we will draw just within the boundaries, leaving a little slice of the shade 1 still visible. Uh, now, of course, I always love to emphasize to people. Oops, I didn't select that. I'm gonna go back and select these. I always like to emphasize to people to always experiment and try out your own techniques. This is the technique that I use, but it's not necessarily the best technique by far. Um, do whatever works for you, and uh, I always learn new stuff by experimenting. So. I don't know about that last one. Could not do that. All right. Okay. So now you've got your basic shades down. You also want to add. Uh, you can go crazy with this. Go up to like four layers of shading. But I usually stop at around uh, three. The base color and two extra shading layers, and then I add a layer for highlights. 
And in this layer, uh, you can use the eyedropper tool to get your base color and just go a little bit less saturated on it. And this won't be too much. Uh, this won't have too much to do with, uh, for the skin layer, maybe more for the hair. Just add a little bit of highlights here and there. Okay. All right. And uh, oh, almost forgot. I have to do the ear. Yeah, and it may be tedious to organize everything this way, but uh, it really pays off in the end. Oh. You're able to change colors pretty quickly. All right, now that that's done, uh, we're going to do the hair now. Next, make another folder. And we'll make our layers, base color. Shade one, shade two, oh. and highlights. All right, now base color, I'm going to go with something that's like very light bluish, maybe even almost white. Uh, and then we can use white for the highlights. Now, if you look here, let me minimize this. The hair layer is on top of the skin layer, so you don't need to delete any of this skin that's showing through. You can just color over it. Uh, and once again, before I do any of this, because if I start coloring, I'm going to go out the lines. So go back to your background layer and select only your character. Okay. And here you have to kind of use some caution because you have a potential, since the hair layer is on top of the skin layer, you have the potential to um, go outside the lines, but like I did right there. But uh, try to get all your uh, easy parts filled up first. So like this part, I can just color straight over there. Um, you can also go back to the line art itself and use a selection like that, but I tend not to like this because it leaves little parts of it out like that, depending on the tolerance of your magic wand tool. So I typically just do it by hand. It's not that time consuming. There we go. Oh, yeah. Okay, so there's our base color. Uh, now, since um, you have the potential of coloring out of the lines, instead of using your general selection, you want to use your specific selection for your base color. This will also allow you, if you're using a light color, to see where there are a little bit of defects. See that? So I'm going to deselect and just, where did that go? Deselect and just draw a little over that. And I think there was another one right here. Yeah, okay. Okay, so that selection looks pretty good now. So I'm going to move on to my shade one, make my color a little bit less saturated, uh, more saturated and darker. And now the light's coming from over here. So I want to draw the majority of the shade over here. And I can use the eraser tool here. See now if you're using, if you were coloring this uh, shade layer on top of your base color, Using the eraser tool would make your your it would just make the erased image white, which is not good. We want to be able to use the brush and the eraser. This is pretty much the fastest way you can switch back and forth between drawing and and editing. Uh, 
you could of course set one color up as the um, actually that's wrong it should be on this side you see, you could set one color up as the um, as the background and the other as the foreground and use the X button to switch between them but I find that using multiple layers is better because then you can change colors later on pretty easily all right so let's go there over here okay all right okay Just extend this all the way. All right. Now select all that stuff you did and move on to shade two. Again, make it a little darker. Okay. And now, for some reason, seems to be selecting a little bit outside of my character. I don't want it to do that. Perhaps I should adjust my background layer. Hmm. Yeah, just select the background and kind of just delete out of each of those and you should get a good result. All right. Now let's Go back and select everything again, and we'll move on to shade two. Leave a little bit of the shade one and back in there. You can also do this thing that I see frequently. You leave like a little line over here it makes it look a little shiny uh, I see that done a lot you can even do it for the other layer okay back to shade 2 Okay, now I want to add in a, a few highlights, and for this I'm just going to use white. That's done. We can move on to the next layer, uh, which will be the eye layer. So, create a new layer called the eye. And typically, this one's a little different. Uh, I like to blend the colors of this layer, so I typically do the eyes uh, all on one layer, um, except for the whites, which we can do right here. Also pretty lazy, so we'll do details also on this layer. <laughs> uh, all right, and then we have another layer. Oh, I've done that on the wrong layer. I'll just rename them. All right. 
So I want to pick pretty sharp shade for this. You start off with like a bright color. Then you can play around and experiment with it, but I usually take a darker color and kind of fill in the top and the sides a bit. And then take my uh, marker tool, kind of blend the colors together. And then for a final touch, I take some pretty light color and just add a little bit of shine around. And then blur that a little bit out too. You don't want it to be too prominent. No, that was a little too much. Yeah, something like that. Yep, and uh, that's basically how you do it. I could uh, do the clothing, but I think you get the idea. All right, now comes the cool part. Say I wanted to change this girl's hair color to something like blonde. Uh, well, if I had all drawn this on one layer, it would be really hard. I could use the magic wand tool and try to change each each part individually by selecting it, but the problem with that is there would be a lot of um, edges, like the edges in here. The borders would retain the original color depending on the tolerance. So what you can do here is go to the hair level and select each layer and lock it. You'll see why I'm doing this in a bit. Uh, this will allow us to color only in the, the place that's already colored in on each of these layers. So for example, if I wanted to change the color to canary yellow, I would change my base color. Then I would go to the shade one layer, pick a color a little bit lighter, color that in. Go to the shade two, go a little darker, go with that, and boom, she's blonde. Uh, this works pretty well, and let's make her, let's make her a Namek. All right, so base color is this greenish type. Oh, see what happens when you don't opacity lock each layer. Okay, there we go. Base color is this greenish type of thing. And then, Shade 1 is a little darker. Shade 2 is even darker than that. And your highlights will be something like this, I think. Maybe a little bit darker. And there you go. And uh, you can easily change colors like this. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty, pretty efficient if you are not sure of which colors you want to end up with. Um, yeah, and uh, now on top of this, let me just put those colors back to normal. On top of this, uh, you can amplify this a little bit more by going above the line art layer, changing your color to black, of course, and uh, just drawing a layer of shade on top of the opacity down to maybe 30, something like that. Grab your character selection from your background layer and uh, it can actually go under the lines but above the color and I'm just gonna put a little shading in here and uh, this is something I learned about through experimentation um, but it can make the colors really pop out of an image like this yeah I know I didn't color in her clothes or her earrings but I'm lazy. All right. All right. We'll just do something like that. Put a little bit over here. Something like that. 
Yeah, maybe lower the opacity a bit more. Duplicate this layer and set the one that's closer to the colors, the bottom one, to blending mode overlay. And you can play around with the uh, the opacity of this and you can watch the colors really pop if you want a more saturated feel or if you want a less saturated feel uh, use the regular black and white layer. Um, I typically go to about 30 on each. Yeah, and uh, that's basically all there is to it.